This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Let's go finally. You know what? We actually have some real news on the Essapuli RV front. Yes, okay, you understand my frustration here 100% if you've been following the channel all summer long. My bang, my head off the desk news topic that's come up almost once a week since probably April 6th is Yesapuli RV. And the frustration I have damn well had with Yesapuli RV and the whole situation in whole is the fact that every single week a new headline came out that was an old headline. Every single week. It was a new headline based on something we already knew. And that's exactly yesterday what I was talking about with the Connor McDavid kind of situation. However, that was more something I had lodged to go with myself as opposed to what the real headlines were. Today, we have confirmation that yes, Apuliarvi is signing with Carpot in the Finnish League and the League, I believe. And now we kind of have the closure. But come on, guys, we talked about this when the John Marino trade was complete that yes, Apuliarvi was close to a signing with Carpot. It is that we're not. We're, we're, we're really not hashing out anything more than the word official today. And that's my frustration. Honestly, the whole make a stink and you got to bluff before we bluff or you got to make your move before we make... It was just a sick, drawn out, unnecessary procedure. If you would have told me from the start that, you know what, go play in Europe and finish it out for a season, have an opt-out clause, and we'll find something before December 1st, I would have been fine. Honestly, this did not, this absolutely did not need to be a drawn-out, summer-long adventure in Edmonton Oilers land, generating absolutely nothing new every single week for almost three months. Four months. It did not need to be like that, and I am sorry. I don't want to blame Yessa in this because the thing is, yes, okay, the Oilers share equal, if not a little bit more blame for how this situation got started, okay? I'm not going to sit here and be a denialist and say it's all on Yessa because realistically, guys, Yakpov, PRV, Schultz, we have a history. And even if it's not on the Oilers, it's the history that makes it as such. So now with that in mind, what I am blaming Yessa and his agent for is seriously, all you had to do is keep things nice and tidy, not keep flapping your gums out there in the public airwaves and making a bigger stink of nothing. Literally, this is nothing out of the ordinary considering we've got Mitch Marner, Miko Rantanen, friggin' almost every single RFA who scored more than 50 points last year still unsigned, yet the loudest, proudest, most annoying Headline of the offseason, yes, okay, I'm biased to the Oilers, was Yessa Pugliarvi. And that is an absolute clown show orchestrated, as I've said all offseason long, by his agent. And this is exactly where I get to blame and yes in his agent is the fact that, I'm sorry, no matter how bad the Oilers screwed this one up, the numbers don't lie. You can't just go out there and demand what you want when the numbers tell a totally different story. If Yessa Pugliarvi was a 60-point player three seasons in a row, and I'm sitting here saying he wants a trade, his agent's frustrated, you know what, it's a completely different story than a player who scored nine points in 46 games and realistically was pretty much an absolute vacant ghost in the Edmonton Oilers lineup all season long for those 46 games, okay? I mean... Somehow, magically, Milan Lucic, believe it or not, did more than Yessa Pugliarvi. Sure, blame the stats, the ice time, whatever you will. But Yessa Pugliarvi, throughout his career in Edmonton, didn't take advantage of what he got. Yes, he got very little most of the time. But the NHL is not a, well, for Milan Lucic, with the Oilers it was. But the NHL should not and is not, and it is the reason Lucic is in friggin' Calgary now, uh, oh, oh, you dictate this, you want this, here, play here. No, that's not how it works. And that's exactly what I'd get there. But that's, that's a completely another argument. And I'm not sitting here trying to rattle through why Yessa Pugliarvi is now in Finland because he couldn't produce in the Oilers lineup. 
Now, this is as essential to the question. Yes, Apuliarvi's threat, his agent's threat all along was, we'll go to Europe if we don't get a trade and if we don't get what we want. Well, guess what? You're in Europe. You got, coincidentally enough, what you said you kind of wanted in a way, right? Obviously, Europe was the threat that they wanted to use if they didn't get what they wanted in North America. Well, guess what? You got it overseas. Now you're locked in. The keys on this conditional contract with Carpot is the fact that he has an oppo by December 1st. The reason it is December 1st, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with how the whole RFA mess has come to start working in the NHL, right? We think William Nylander last year. This will be a mess until the CBA is fixed up next CBA negotiations. It's the simple fact that you have to have an RFA signed by December 1st in order for them to play that season. So, now, this is where we get into the fun, intriguing part of this entire debacle because guess what? The entire power is in Mr. Ken Holland's hands. This is the beauty. You know what? For Yesa Pugliarvi and his agent, they can say what they want. This was worst case scenario. Going to Europe without a trade is worst case scenario for them because you don't make that big of a stink to come up empty. That's all I'm going to say. You don't, you don't go out there and shout at the top of your lungs in the press that you want something done just to end up in Europe. That, <laughs> no, don't, I don't buy that for a second. So why does Ken Holland hold all the power in this move now? is the fact that if he doesn't trade him by December 1st, sorry, Essa, you're playing in Europe all season long. And let me tell you, for a guy who's been shouting in the media for the past two months that he wants to play on a top six line in the NHL, I am sorry, you, you can be as happy as you are to be home in Finland, playing for your hometown team, all that. You're still very upset. And that's the beauty here is, you know what, it's a lesson in how hockey is managed, how hockey is run as a business. Agents and players are getting very, very out of control in my mind about how they think they run the team as opposed to the team running the team. And that's the dangerous crossroads we're entering as we get into the next CBA discussions here, is the fact that all these young kids and their agents who were already millionaires long before these kids even were draft eligible. Well, guess what? They're all getting greedy. And let me tell you, this is where hockey as a business is going to get nasty. And this is my warning in the CBA talks upcoming is the fact that both sides have to sit down, come back to planet Earth and realize, you know what? You don't need to make 10 billion dollars the second you turn 21. That is the biggest mistake going on in the NHL right now is you've got veteran players who have beat themselves up for 14 years getting paid less than a million when you've got a kid who's turned 21, 22 and hasn't scored more than 40 points once in their career demanding four million dollars. I'm sorry. What? 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 Uh, no matter, uh, yeah, you can get into the Andrew Luck debate and everything, but that's to my point. You've got 34-year-old guys taking $900,000. I don't know how old Patrick Maroon realistically is, but that's the number I'm trying to throw out there. Meanwhile, these kids who do something for three years, they get into the NHL, they play a couple of games for three years, think they own the league. Uh, excuse me. I am sorry. I am 22. I came out of college. I came, actually, let me rephrase that. I came into college and I thought I owned the world. And guess what? Reality very harshly shoves it up you know where very quickly. And this is exactly what needs to happen in the next CBA. We can't have these messes dragging on. This is borderline absurd. Just borderline absurd. The fact that we have kids who have played three years in the league being a big distraction in the offseason when guys who have been in this league for 10 years who are the reason the league exists still, 
mostly. Seriously, I mean, yeah, okay, if you want a league 25 and under, it's not the NHL. Well, guess what? They're going less paid for way more wear and tear experience and years put in, years paid in to the NHL. And these kids think, oh, I played three years. I now deserve $10 million. I'm sorry. It is an absolute mess. And it starts with the greedy agents, starts with greedy kids, and starts with an abusive system that is the current NHL negotiating tactics. Guys, I'm Tyson, this stolen TV. I don't even know where I started this video, but we'll get to it in the comments section down below. Let's discuss Yes, RV over in Europe, opt out December 1st. I want to hear what you think on this mess finally coming to an end. I will catch you in the next one.